Bonjour Year 10, um, I've uh, decided to uh, try something new, uh, I'm going to do a video uh, for you today, a kind of uh, lesson of sorts, uh, on a, a photo card on the topic, our current topic, that is, of holidays. I'm going to start by saying that um, I hope that you and your family are all safe and well, and that you're working hard from home, as I'm sure you all are. So today I'm going to talk you through uh, a photo card, uh, as I said, on our topic of holidays, you should see that pop up here um, in the corner, fingers crossed, and um, I'm just going to go through each bullet point just like we would in a, in a normal lesson, and, and hopefully that will be useful for you. Uh, what I'm hoping is that maybe some of you can, like me, maybe record your answers, uh, either in a video or a, a voice recording, and send them to me, uh, and then I can give you my feedback as well um, on, on you know, how we've done. I can even maybe look at marking that against uh, the GCSE mark scheme. So, as we know, the first question in a photo card is always, qu'est-ce qu'il y a sur la photo? And this means obviously what is in the photo. Now we've done this plenty of times, so I'm hoping uh, that if I ask you now uh, on this video what, how we should go about answering that first question, you all know that we should be using palm oil. Uh, so we start with people. So that's obviously the people that we can see in the photo. Uh, that could be um, boys, girls, adults, children. Or in this case, as you can see, we're probably better off saying that there are lots of people uh, in the photo. So we've got lots of people uh, on a beach on holiday. Um, so there are various ways to start with the, the people part of palm oil. Um, easiest by far is to say, sur la photo, il y a. Sur la photo, il y a. In the photo, there is. And then we can just talk about how many people are in. So in this case, we might say, sur la photo, il y a beaucoup de gens. Or beaucoup de personnes. Either is fine, but lots of people. Um, if the photo card was different and had maybe two boys and two girls or two adults, we could change that. We could say, uh, sur la photo, il y a deux hommes et deux femmes, two men, two women, il y a un enfant, if there was a child in the photo. But in this particular case, we're best saying beaucoup de gens because there were lots of people in the photo. So that's, that's sorted our P in palm oil. Our second is the action. So what are they doing in that photo? And there are several key things we need to remember when we're talking about the action. First one, we are never, ever, ever, ever going to say um, il sont joué or il sont um, nagé. We're never going to say il sont plus infinitive. Simply doesn't work. We've got two options, therefore. We can either do a present tense conjugation of the verb. So if, for example, they are playing, we can say il joue. Or, almost easier, is to use en train de. So we can say ils sont en train de. Okay, so ils sont en train de. And a good one here, because their sunbathing would be se penser. Ils sont en train de. De se penser. They are in the middle of, if you like, sunbathing. So using en train de would be my best tip uh, for when you are doing the action part of palm oil. That brings us on to L, the location. Uh, and again, this is what this time we can use il sont because we can say they are and the place that, that they are in. Okay, so we can say il sont in this case maybe à la plage. They're at the cinema, il sont or cinema, um, if they're at the café, or sont au café, and you get the, the idea there. So we can do our location, we can use il sont to say that. Then we have M, which is our mood. Uh, so that's how the people in the photo look. Are they happy or are they sad? And again, we can use il sont for this too. Ils sont heureux, they are happy. Um, ils sont tristes, they're sad. Um, so we can use il sont to do the mood in our palm oil as well. The next part is optional because it's a double U for weather. Uh, now, sometimes the photos will be indoors, so we don't necessarily have to say, well, we can't say really, what the weather is like uh, if we're indoors. But if they're outdoors, we can use our, our weather phrases. Il y a du soleil, it's sunny. Il fait beau, it's nice. Uh, il neige, it's snowing. Il pleut, it's raining. So lots of different uh, 
options there for weather if they're outside. So in this case, they're on the beach, we can presume therefore that it's nice and sunny, and we can say, ya du sole. Um, and that's finally then our opinion. So we're going to use an opinion phrase to give uh, an opinion on the photo, preferably what they're doing in the photo, not an opinion about the photo itself. So if they're sunbathing, for example, as they are here, it's best to give you your opinion on sunbathing uh, rather than the photo itself, okay? So that's also our palmo, that's people, action, location, mood, weather, and opinion. Now remember to use this for bullet point one only, so palmo is just for our first bullet point, it's just for that qu'est-ce qu'il y a sur la photo question. Um, a couple of other things to mention about that bullet point, there are lots of ways that you'll remember from uh, when we've worked on these in class on our chatty mat, so that you can kind of up level those phrases a bit, so you're not just saying il y a, il sont train de, so you're not repeating the same language all the time. So some ideas of how you might do that, for example, are, let's say, um, I see, je vois, so rather than il y a, you can say I see. Um, so I photo je vois. Um, I can see, even better, that's a modal verb. Uh, je peux voir, nice modal in there, je peux voir. Uh, we can also say, uh, we can use our GCSE genius opinions, which we should be using all the time. Um, and there are, there are tons of those, uh, as you know, and you're really, really good at using now. Uh, but you can put your opinion phrases in there, again, to just help you lengthen that out. Remember, we're going for the content here. We're looking for the highest content that we can. So we wanted about five, um, about five sentences really for every bullet point, including the one qu'est-ce qu'il y a sur la photo. That shouldn't be a problem if you're following Palmo because we're going to get at least six, maybe seven sentences. A couple of things to remember, the photo is always in black and white, so don't talk about the colour of anything in the photo, and um, also we don't say what isn't in the photo. Okay, whilst using negatives is usually a really, really good idea to add your genius complex language. Actually, um, saying what's not in the photo um, isn't going to be markable um, in the GCSE photo card question. So that deals with our first question, that's our palm word. I'd love for you to, to have a go at that. Uh, remember, you've got your chatty mats, your challenge mats. I've uploaded those for you as well. So if you want to get the 7 to 9 challenge mat or the GCSE genius mats, they're all there for you to access um, on, on Doddle as well. So I'm going to look at our second bullet point now, which is, Qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire au bord de la mer? Once again, that's, Qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire au bord de la mer? Which is, what can you do at the seaside? Now a really great idea here, we've been really lucky in this bullet point, they've given us our starting structure, which is on peu, you can. Again, modal verb, really good to use and really easy to use as well because we can follow on peu by any infinitive, whether it's a regular verb or an irregular verb, really doesn't matter, on peu aller à la plage, for example, you can go to the beach, on peu manger de la glace, you can eat ice cream. And just as you would in class, we're going to aim for five sentences about what you can do at the beach. But unlike in our first bullet point, if we want to extend that, if we want to go for those high content marks, then we can actually say, however, using one of our many words for however, cependant, portant, néanmoins, toutefois, any of these will be fine. Uh, and we can use those to, uh, to say, however, you can't do this at the beach, okay? So we can easily get our kind of five sentences there by naming two or three activities that you can do, not forgetting to include your GCSE genius opinion phrases when you're doing that. So maybe if you say, on peut uh, manger de la glace, we can eat ice cream. We can go with lots of genius ways to then further that, lengthen that by giving your opinions using genius opinion phrases. For example, je dirais que la glace est délicieuse. I would say that ice cream is delicious. Or je mange de la glace toujours. I eat ice cream all the time. Um, so we can add uh, opinion phrases in there to, to do that similarly. Try and maybe include different, um, different types of activities, uh, not, not just, you know, the standard je mange de la glace, see if you can include uh, various other things. So five sentences on what you can do at the beach, just remembering to get all your genius language in there and even including at this time 
uh, negatives. So our first two questions, quite straightforward, we've got palm oil for the first one. For our second one, we have um, what you can do at the beach. And again, you're quite skilled at this now, I'm sure that with a mixture of opinion phrases, the activities that we did in the last week as well, before we broke up, you've got lots and lots of things there to help you to build that answer. Our third question, Qu'est-ce que tu as fait pendant les vacances l'année dernière? Once again, that question. Qu'est-ce que tu as fait pendant les vacances l'année dernière? So, we should have now a big siren going off in our heads going, oh, tense, tense. We have a different tense that we need to include. And we've got that tense indicator, l'année dernière. Whenever we see l'année dernière, we know we're talking about the past tense. Fortunately, this is something else we did just before uh, we uh, broke up. Uh, so we can use all of those uh, past tense activities now to talk about what you did on holiday. And again, we're going to aim for five sentences. So key things to include would be where you went, okay? Using uh, our van der Tramp verb, je suis allé. Je suis allé. Ladies, not forgetting to agree that e, um, agree that allé with that extra e if you're writing. Um, so we're going to say je suis allé. We could also say j'ai voyagé. I travelled. Also fine. Um, so you could talk about where you've been. Talk about who you've got, who you went with. We can talk about how we got there using all our transport options. We could even talk about why we chose uh, to travel um, in that way. Maybe uh, because it's cheap. Or cheaper than something else which would be even better wouldn't it because then you've got a comparative for example uh, je suis allé en uh, avion uh, puisque c'est moins cher que en voiture so I went by plane because it's less expensive than by car so we've got several options there about travel so we're gonna say where we went who we went with how we travelled, and then of course we're going to talk about the activities that we did there. And we did loads of these before we grow up, before we uh, broke up. For example, j'ai visité les monuments, uh, j'ai nagé avec les dauphins, uh, j'ai fait du ski and lots of different sports that we did, uh, j'ai fait du shopping, j'ai acheté des souvenirs, lots and lots of activities. Um, moving on to say why you did those particular activities, and as always, using our GCSE genius language as we do that. So, j'ai fait du shopping, moi j'adore faire du shopping, c'est le top du top. Uh, and we could even add other people's views if ever we're struggling, that goes with all questions actually, if ever we're struggling to lengthen something out, it's a really good idea to include views of other people. So maybe you went shopping, however your dad hates it, cependant mon père le déteste. Uh, and then we could go on to say what he did instead, donc, so therefore, and then say what he did. So there are loads of ways to, to kind of pad out uh, those uh, those sentences so that we get to five sentences in total. I'm absolutely certain uh, that you can all do that really, really well. So let's start with our first three questions. So we've done question one, qu'est-ce qu'il y a sur la photo? Using palm oil, remember, and never saying il sont, plus an infinitive, il sont joué is banned, please no. Um, our second uh, bullet point, uh, qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire au bord de la mer? What we can do on holiday. Remembering that now we can say what we can't do as well and our opinions about that, which we can't do with bullet point one. And question three, that big past tense question, making sure that we're using the past tense properly and that we're doing our A sounds on our verbs as well, that Rihanna A, A, so J'ai nagé, um, okay, membrane, and that, that we have to have the have, I think I said that once, we have to have the have when we're using our past tense um, for that third bullet point, please. That leaves us with just two questions that you know you don't usually get to see uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to show you these today uh, and I'm going to talk to you about the, the last two bullet points that usually you would have to prepare or come up with kind of off the top of your head if you like. Absolutely confident that you can do that. Uh, the first one of those. Est-ce que tu préfères les vacances d'été ou les vacances d'hiver et pourquoi? So this is, do you prefer holidays in the summer or in the winter? 
and why. Now as long as you have got your first three bullet points with five sentences or more, if the answers to your second two, when you're kind of having to think of them spontaneously, are a little bit shorter, uh, that's not the end of the world. We're still going to aim for five sentences if we possibly can, uh, but as I said, not the end of the world if you can't, you know, if you can't come up with that straight away, uh, three or four will be nice. Um, so talking about whether we prefer winter holidays or summer holidays, uh, that's an opportunity, isn't it, to use lots and lots of comparatives, okay? Um, so plunker, so it's, you know, um, I prefer um, summer holidays, well, holidays in the summer because it's more um, interesting, not interesting, don't say it's more interesting, a rubbish, rubbish adjective to say, but we can say because it's more exciting or that there's more to do, uh, things like that. So you've got an opportunity there to use uh, lots of comparative structures between uh, winter and summer. And another nice trick with a question like this is to relate it to a personal experience. So you could say, for example, I prefer holidays in winter because I love to ski. Um, in fact, last year I went to wherever and did you know ski and had a skiing holiday it was fantastic so you can kind of bring it round into almost a, a narration um, as well uh, the last of those questions avec qui est-ce que tu vas en vacances normalement avec qui est-ce que tu vas en vacances normalement with whom do you normally go on holiday um, so it's, it, this is quite admittedly quite a difficult question to lengthen out completely um, because it's quite a straightforward question with who do you usually go on holiday and why, uh, on holiday with, sorry, and why. Um, but again, you could always relay a personal experience into that or we could even, if we wanted to be really clever, use um, <clears throat> a, a future or a conditional tense uh, to help us answering that question. For example, we could say, um, usually I go on holiday uh, with my parents, however, uh, next year I will go to Spain with my friends after my exams, um, I'm really excited, those kinds of things. So that's our five questions. Um, what I'd like us to do is to prepare at home your answers to those five questions, including the two unknown questions, using all of those resources that you've got at home, everything that you've got. So you can use your chatty mat, you can use your seven to nine challenge mats, your GCSE genius mats, all the uh, worksheets with all the activities that we did, um, all, all of those uh, PowerPoint slides that we've had from the last two lessons uh, before we broke up. All of those things are gonna help you to, to build this answer. Be careful with your tenses, as always. Include genius language, as always, remember in our past tense question to make sure that we're using that a eh, a eh sound when we speak, as always. Um, and if, like I said, what I would really, really love, what I would really love is if you could uh, record that somehow, um, either on your phone, just audio will be fine, um, or you could do a video if you're feeling uh, brave like me, um, and you can send that to me. And if you do that, I'll mark that on the mark scheme for you. So uh, apologies uh, if this hasn't been the best video ever. It's the, it's the first one that I've made. I will aim to uh, make them as exciting as I can in future. If you think anything's missing, if you want any more information, any more help uh, putting your answers together, then email me. You've got you've all got my email address now. So you can just email me, ask me anything you want, um, and I'll be more than happy. Uh, to help you. Um, I'm going to kind of set a deadline for this, please. Um, so I think I'd like, if we could have a go at this for, for next uh, Tuesday, uh, that would be fantastic. And then I can start seeing how many responses I've got and marking that and getting the feedback to you. It is really, really good practice to be uh, recording things like this at home, um, year 10, because, you know, we are going to come back soon, uh, hopefully. And um, and we will have to go straight into these photo cards. If we've, if we've not been using our French or speaking our French for a very long time, that's, that's going to be just that bit harder. Um, so it's a really, really good idea to, to get practice in. Um, you have, as I said, everything at home that is going to help you to put this together. Uh, so for now, I'll say au revoir. Um, and that I hope you're all safe and well. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.